Hey guys, Brian back with another video today. I'm going to show you how we built this mobile plywood and lumber cart. If you want to see how I did it, stick around for another shop project. So one of the challenges in my garage workshop is that I'm really limited on wall space. I'm also limited on floor space. So I needed to create a lumber and plywood cart that was not only efficient, but needed to be able to move it around on casters. As with most projects, I like to start with a hand sketch and work right into 3D parametric CAD so that I can solve all the problems on the computer and not waste a lot of materials in real life. And as I was designing this, I looked at trying to do a couple things. I was trying to build a simple rack that I could build in a day out of simple materials and simple joinery and spend around $100 or less. That was my target. At the core of this design is the A-frame. There's four sections, they're all exactly the same, and all the cuts are exactly the same at five degrees. The basic idea with this jig, like most jigs, is to get everything to line up perfectly. And I'll put little stop blocks so everything goes in the right same place each time. We'll drill our holes and put them together and everything will line up perfectly. So first I set up the miter saw to five degrees, locked it down, and I made all these angle cuts at one shot. And this ensured that all the parts were cut with the same angle and everything would line up. By the way, if you guys haven't seen the build video for this miter saw station, check it out. I'll put a link below. Now before we start putting the A-frame sections together, I'm going to mark out the lines for the conduit holes. I'm marking out the lengths based on the plans. I'm going to mark out one of these and transfer them to the other three. I'll be drilling these with a 3 quarter inch Forstner bit. The outside diameter of a half inch conduit pipe is around 11 sixteenths. So if you want to purchase a drill bit that's really on size and gets a firm fit, you can. In my case, I just used what I had. With my large framing square, I'm now laying out the lines so that everything lines up. And I'm using the first one as a story stick for the rest. Drilling holes like these at the drill press is the best way to go. You get nice square holes. Uh, they'll be clean and centered every single time. If you don't have this, you can alternatively just use a drill. You just have to be more careful. You can also make a drill guide out of wood so you get nice straight drill holes as well. Once all the holes are drilled, we can start putting the A-frames together. And I've put a stop both on the top of the template as well as for the rails so everything lines up and each frame will be exactly the same. With all the parts configured, we can now just flush them up on the side and start drilling two holes in each joint. And each rail will have four holes total, or four carriage bolts that'll bolt each one together. Once you've drilled all the holes and pushed the bolts through to hold everything together, you can flip it over and we'll put the washers, the nuts, with Loctite on the other side and bolt it up. You'll see me use Loctite in a lot of projects. You can alternatively use nylon lock nuts. They work just the same. I just prefer to use this. And 
that's it. You got your first A-frame. Now you can use that same template and build the other three. Now that the A-frames are complete, we can start on the base frame. The base frame is easy. We set the saw back to zero degrees and make all square cuts. You can follow the cut list. It's all nominal and I've designed it so that it uses the minimum amount of waste for this material. As with most frames, I like to throw a K-body on them. This allows you to line everything up flush and get it ready before you pre-drill. And now we're going to pre-drill for our lag screws and bolt those in place. Once the outer rails are in place, we're going to start putting the intermediate rails in. In this case, in the intersection, there's two, and I'm using my K-body clamp to lay everything out square, adjust it where I need to be, and then we'll pre-drill and lag bolt it together. The clamp method works really good to get it exactly where you need it before you start drilling and then everything lines up. Here I'm adding an extra piece on either side for the casters. The casters have a four bolt mounting pattern so that it needs extra meat to go into for the four screws. And once this is in place, we're ready to put our first A-frame section. To line up the A-frame, I've cut a piece that fits in the bottom of the A-frame, marked a center line, and set it center on the frame, and this way I can cut the other side pieces to length. Once you cut the side pieces to length, you're going to tap them in place. You want these to be nice and tight and firm, and you want to be able to hit these in with a mallet, and that'll ensure that this isn't loose, and that this A-frame can't rack side to side. Because I don't have a helper on this project, I decided to move everything to the floor now that it's getting kind of heavy. On the floor, I'm going to set this thing off the floor with some scrap 2x4s, and you'll see why this comes in handy. I set up my parts on each side so I can get ready to put the first A-frame sections in place. Propping this off the floor and putting a little ledger underneath will allow me to set my A-frame on top of it and make it flush with the bottom of the frame. With the spacers in place with the A-frame, I've taken some F-clamps, made everything flush, and this way I can screw everything in place and nothing will move on me. After those pieces are fastened in place, we can screw in the last part and this will really stiffen this sandwich up because we're going to through bolt this together. Once that last rail is flush and clamped in place, we're going to screw it in place with some torque screws. I didn't use lag bolts for these, it's not really necessary. This is just a final lock in place. And lastly for this first frame, we're going to pre-drill for our lag bolts because we're going to through bolt this three package steel together. To do this I use a long spade bit and this allowed me to drill through all five inches of this material. Again, all this stuff gets through bolted, Loctite, washer, and nut on top. I decided at this point to put both end frames on, put the casters on, and then flip this up and put the final two in place. And then this way I can line up the middle two to line up the outers. 
The casters are just eyeballed in place. I set them offset on both sides so they don't interfere with the fasteners that are coming in from the outside of the frame. And screwed them in place with lag screws. For this project I decided to use six casters, four of which are locking, and the two in the middle are swivel, but they're just free. And this will allow me to move it around the shop and really lock it in place because there is quite a bit of weight to this once you load it up. Using the same centering method and the same ledger method, we're going to set the center frames and sections in place. And to do this, I've clamped this ledger underneath it so that it's flush again with the bottom of the frame. And before I put the plywood in place, I decided to slip some of these conduit in and really see how this thing was shaping up. This is the exciting part of the project where you see the light at the end of the tunnel and you really see this thing coming together. One of the last part of the project is to rip up some 3 quarter inch plywood which will serve as the base as well as some intermediate rails that will hold all these A-frame sections together. I decided to pre-finish this stuff off camera so that it lasts a long time and it doesn't absorb any moisture in my shop, especially the ones facing the floor. And if you don't want to buy a sheet of plywood to do this, you can just use dimensional lumber because it serves the same purpose. I start on the top by clamping some blocks in place so I can rest this top rail and this way I don't have to hold it on both sides while I'm screwing it in. And the purpose of this top rail is so that the spread between each of the frame sections is exactly the same and everything will sit flat. I screwed a bottom plate in place and this will make pulling the sheet goods on and off this rack a little bit easier rather than just using the framing itself and bumping into it. Once you set the top rail, the width between each frame section will be the same and the rest is just setting the vertical height exactly the same so it looks nice. One upgrade I'll probably make in the future is to make some kind of rail on the front of this so plywood can't fall out. Either some conduit vertical on the front of this with some brackets or just a simple ledger with a piece of plywood. One of the great things about the design of this rack is you could use it in many different ways. You could use both sides and then put lumber in the middle or you could use the middle section just to put drops like I did. I have three sections so I decided to do quarter, half inch and three quarter inch drops in their respective bins and this allowed me to store even more material in a place where I would just normally be collecting dust. And that's it guys, a really fun one day project build costs around hundred dollars with locally sourced materials at your home improvement store. I'll be updating the build materials as well as the project plan so that you could build this for your shop. If you'd like to see that, click on the link below for the article on my website. As always, thank you guys for watching my video and remember to subscribe. It really helps to make the content in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care.